the struggle that some of our ancestors have been through. My, my, my struggles was minute. It was very minimal to what they had to go through. You know, so who am I to just fold up? I'm looking at myself at 19, 20 years old, like, hold on, I could live till I'm 70. There's no way I can live the next 50 years in this hole. You know? So I had to pick myself up. I had to say, you know, by any means, no matter what is on my back, no matter what criminal charges, no matter what doors are closing on me, there's a door for me, there's a purpose for me. So, therefore, I began to do more studying. I eventually changed my major from computers to African American studies. And a lot of people were telling me like, well, what are you gonna do with that? You can't make money like that. Even the dean of the computer um, <coughs> department, or the technology department, he's like, well, you can make this amount of money doing this. Why would you go to that? You can't make that doing that. I had to tell them like, life is bigger than money, you know? I got my riches from my family through love, you know? We rich with love, and that carries me every day, you know? So, um, basically, the birth of what we doing, it came through just my experiences. And I can't say, a lot of us, you know, we sit back and point at whoever's bad, so-and-so, little John John, he, he's bad, stay away. Like, no, we can't push no you to the side. We don't have that that opportunity. We, we, we have to carry them, you know? Every time they fall, we got to pick them up. You know, we got to show them by any means we got your back. You need to learn from this mistake. You know, we need to gravitate more towards understanding rather than punishment first. You know, we need to understand why these youth are doing these crying out for help and different issues are causing them to feel like they need to make money by any means doing this or that or third. You know, I'm no one to judge. I'm just trying to lead by example. You know, so. Our mission, uh, Soul Society, like I said, support opportunity, unity, and leadership. Those are the principles we stand. Basically, all the doubt that I get at this point, all the people who say you can't make money doing this or you can't make this come to life. I got a lot of my peers that like, why are you trying to do that? That's going to be hard to do. Like, yeah, it, it is hard. It's hard organizing people and running an organization. Trust me. But I'm all for a challenge. You understand? I want a challenge. I'm accepting all challenges right now, you know. I'm looking at my future life by any means, you know. There's nothing going to stop me from doing everything that I'm here to do, you know. By any means, I'm going to do it. There's, there's, there's a long road. There's mistakes. I'm going to fail some more, you know. But best believe that mistake, is, it, it's, 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 a, um, it's a lesson. That's why I look at mistakes like that's a lesson, you know. I'm going to build on every mistake that I ever made. I'm going to open up every door I can. And anything the youth want to do, I want to bring them the resources and bring them the experience of so people to teach them. You know, if there's a little child in the hood that wants to play a guitar, he might not have the opportunity to pick up a guitar and, and really like learn how to do that, you know? Shout out to my boy Ryan Green who did his painting, you know? Imagine if he didn't have this... This, this canvas, the painting, and what it wouldn't exist, you know? Imagine Michael Jordan never growing up around basketball court to really like hone in on his dream and really build on that. Imagine a Picasso without having the tools to really paint pictures. That would be a dream dead. That would never exist, you know? So my mission today is to challenge all you all to go out and find some youth, figure out what they want to do help them get the resources, or we're going to do a fundraiser so little John John can get this guitar and work on that, you know, so I just want to leave that with y'all. Soul Society is village-minded at the same time, that's uh, one of our partners that we, we work with, and it's a village thing. We all want, you know, one fall, we all fall, you know, one go to jail, we all doing that time together, you understand? So. I just want y'all to leave that on y'all heart, and we're going to go ahead and get this show started, and we got some treats for y'all, and we're going to do some building. And let this not be the one and only day. Don't come just because Carol Rest, don't support just because, you know, after this, this is going to be the village. You know, we're going to continue to build, continue to research us, contact us, any resources, knowledge, support that you want to give, please find your way to get our contact. And, and we're going to build this, this village up together. So, um, we're about to get started.
about to have our first artist come to the stage, Simone. Simone Ready. Oh, and this is another thing. I got this from KRS One, you know. The future is now. You understand? I'm a king. I don't have a kingdom, I don't have jewels and whatnot, but I'm a king right now. And best believe when I get my kingdom, get my jewels and my following, I'm gonna already be prepared for that. Cause I'm living it, you understand? This one of the greatest singers ever, you know, whether y'all believe that today or whether she is today, the future is, is on its way. It's going to be one of the greatest, believe that. Of inhumanity, I said, artists spoken for vulnerable and 
enlightenment. This is your time. Tell stories of those with no voices and shed light through the blinds of the closed-minded. I said artists teaching for higher learning. This is your time to show and tell. Don't waste it on preaching. I said to all of you artists, if you have been blessed with the platform, the followers, and the power, then you have the obligation to be more, to be a leader and not a zombified dollar sign on the toe tag, driving in the mainstream commercialized jester, yet you claim to be queen, yet you claim to be king, but you speak on and feed on brains versus knowledge, don't be vilified and mindless just to be fed, the world has enough of the walking dead, artists, artists, they're engulfing our village, artists, remember the village, artists, rise up, but first, artists, Wake the hell up. It ain't embarrassing. You get caught in your lie, that's embarrassing. Now I spill all my truth in the booth. Never spill my cup of hands. Don't mix that there with my enemies. And don't come messing up my enemies. And you see, I've been trying to live righteous and battle confliction. No. We've been trying to live righteous and balance confliction. True. Like all of my brothers, my sisters, my in a system with government and a religion. You see, the real is back, the bill is back, and it's some of my people we can't bring back. And I get sick of writing raps for how they killing my homies when it's the homies that's killing the homies. Such a horrible feeling. Caught in my feelings, I get stuck sometimes in this traffic jam that's all in my mind. See, we've been smoking to ease the pain and drinking until it fades, but it never really goes away. See, we just store it away. I lost my nigga, but somebody lost a brother. Somebody lost a father. Somebody prayed for the mother of the son gone. And for the one just born, you gotta keep your mama warm and shine through all her storms. These young boys are getting caught in position where they never really get to be children. It's such a shame you gotta be a grown man at such a young age. I just pray they never throw you in cages. But if my pants ain't low, then I'm a nuisance. They use some bullets instead of nooses. I had to top my mind down about to lose it. But if I lose it, then I become useless. And thou shalt not let my brothers dance in the place of ignorance. They got to be clear to with the shit. So many questions, what do they think here? Atheists? No. I just question everything, and that's real shit. Feel this. America the zoo. Why are we going to lose? Woo. Might get a trophy if you shoot. Mm. America the zoo. Why? On the loose, might get a trophy if you shoot. America the zoo, wow. On the loose, might get a trophy if you shoot. Right in front of your brother, mother, father, sister, cousin, and your uncles too. Same way they used to hang my niggas from the noose. Ain't that the truth? They ain't no more silly costumes. They license to shoot like pop, 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 pop. Then they showing us proof. Then they get on TV with these pain interviews. I swear they want to take out all of our women too, dog. I think this is so crazy, see? My mind on my soon, because you never know what your enemy my about to do. Mm -hmm. Forget what they about to do. We on this mission too, in the spirit. Holy Ghost when I'm in this booth. But when I leave this here, I'm in this world's pool. Sharks and runs. But I'm a wave dude. I mix it through. Any and everything. Everything's everything. Hey, Miss Hill, what it do? Miss Educated you. I'm talking about me too. So I'm trying to break. Me and my niggas out the zoo, true. America the zoo, wild, on the loose. Yeah. Might get a trophy if you shoot. Now that was all with adrenaline and rushing anxiety and shots bust. Flowers bloom, blood of my homies in the soil. Oh man, you never know who's coming for you, so wait, you baby, stack the cream I'm thinking of. Rest in peace all the young kings we lost this year to the hands of our own and to the enemy spirit. Y'all been trapped in this dark space like, can't you hear our Cross for your help, dear God, is you really there? I get disturbed sometimes if we really being honest. Kind of losing touch with the previous things they taught us. I've been trying to find myself, though. Listen, I've been trying to break these chains off. You know? break them. Break them. Both parents in our homes, oh no, we never had. Not even grandparents becoming from broken families. Rooted from way back, so how we repair the damage? Souls of generations. Well, listen, see, we've been planning. Food for your thought. I know you can feel the famous. Fool for your soul, I need you to pull out cameras and 
catching every moment. God damn it, man, shooting at us. When I told y'all to shoot, I really meant pull out your cameras. And the thing, we gotta raise some kids here. Well, we gonna raise some kings and queens here. Look, they keep on telling us that the ending is near, but self-destruction is all that seems to appear in all these years. I was taught that my history only goes back as far as slavery. Well, Eldridge Page, one of my heroes, my grandfather. Hollis Hill, one of my heroes, my grandfather. Willie May, Eddie Page, my grandmother. Hey, the my heroes, I swear, y'all can try to break me down and watch out. Rolls like pebbles, I know it's levels to this here, and I'm still learning. And man, I tell you, why I'm. America the Zoo. Wow. On the loose. Might be the trophy if you shoot. I go by the name of T. Walker. I saw my now niece, and I said, good morning, sunshine. I'm happy to see you out again. Dark clouds around your eyes, because you just had a bout with him. But all you know about a man is what you learned from mama then. Boy, you better hold on to that little old piece of man. But you got no peace with him, so you can't find no peace within. Loving wars, all you've been taught, so it's hard to say peace to him. Better to have love and lost than never loved, I reckon so. But if you lost in love and that love gets lost, it's like that record's broke. I love him, no, I hate him, no, I love him. You can't let him go. Said you need to breathe until his hands around your neck and throat. Ain't nobody leaving, bro. I kill you before I let you go. Why you wheezing, bleeding, baby screaming, Daddy, let it go! You nothing without me. Look at you, where you gonna go? You fat, you black, you ugly, you busted, you broke. I made you, how dare you think you gon' hit the door? A couple seconds later, he back on a different note. I'm sorry, baby, it got crazy. Never meant to hurt you since they laid me off of work. I'm crazy about to go berserk, but listen, every relationship you get in ain't perfect. I know how we can fix this. We can go right back to church and... Now they got the front row singing them hallelujahs. We smiling like we all clueless. They smiling like we all stupid. We all know what the truth is. We act like nothing is wrong. We all acting so foolish. You so accident prone. Kids saying something is wrong. We tell them the mighty business. What happened to that sentiment that it's going to take a village? We want to be good Christians, not get caught up in convicting. Judge not unless you judge, but through that silence, we can sit and so in silence. We sit and teaching our children not to stand. Teaching the definition of a woman and a man, and that woman is to be submissive, even if that means that man got to put in her position by way of using his hand. Lord sunshine, don't let this dark cloud block out your glow. Don't let it devour that flower before she gets to grow. Don't let her swallow the seed that been locked inside your soul. Realize you're raising the child in the way you have her go. She said, mind your business life. This ain't your life to write on loose leaf pages and parade on the stages, masquerading as if you know an inkling about what love is. She rolled her neck and cut her blackened eyes as she spewed obscenities over swollen lips. And I nodded my head in agreement as if to admit that I didn't know what love is, but I know what it ain't. It ain't painted faces and mascara masquerading situations. It ain't the manipulation of memories leading you to believe that he only did it once and a slap is not a punching. Maybe if you didn't aggravate him. It ain't your imagination making you live with the what he could be if the what he should be. He ain't. I can't take another excuse. The perverted version of the truth sickens me. See, I used to have sympathy, but now it's all gone because when he kicked you in your ribs, he broke my sympathetic bone to you. Act as if I should condone this. Like I should just bite my tongue, clench my lips, and don't speak on this, but this silence ain't a verb. If I allow him to hurt you, I might as well hold you down and allow him to kick you and curse you, but your worth is too important to let him destroy it. Your worth is too important to let some man mess up God's divine plan because he chooses to lay his hands on you. Dang the man that's a boy trying to put his foot inside a man's shoe, and I don't understand how you don't get tired. I mean, you exhausted your bank account, shelling out $350 each week on domestic violence, but I guess when you got money on your mind, money, money on your mind, that smack in the face is a small price to pay the shot. I guess that Dooney and Burke, her main Burke versus is enough for you to back up all your pain and your hurt, but your worth is too important to let it destroy. Your worth is too important to eyesight of my daughter that's trying to become the woman that you ain't met yet, because you done let some boy put his hands on you, and now you're defending it with Cuba, but what does love have to do with this? Excuse me if this sounds a little tough, but you can't wait for the dude to murder you before you say it's enough. I know there's feelings and emotions and it makes things tough, but you gotta step in the name of love, of love. I never have to write a little poem on domestic violence or just step on the stage, say your name, and ask for a moment of silence. Oh, no. right? First thing it asks you for is your location, right? You know what? If, if you don't have a history of your cookies on, you got to type everything all the way back out because you've lost your history, so it's going to take you longer to get to your destination. They're saying we're workers and ain't nobody upset. <laughs> Oh, we didn't want to be called that. You know what? That, that gives you a certain resilience. I went through hell, I'm still standing. That means I'm built different.
Lord, they'll say, oh, no, 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 you, you, you're taking it too far. Slavery's over and all that. Y'all remember good times? Yeah. So we're going to do propaganda and propaganda. We, we'll fall for the propaganda, but nobody really wants to take a propaganda, a real look at things sometimes. Can we do this? Y'all got to rock with me. When I grew up, I thought James Evans was the best father on the planet. And I thought about him. He was upset all the time. Family was scared of him. We don't know how he made Michael and uh, Thelma. Him and Florida, that's a different conversation. <laughs> Couldn't hold down no jobs. I'm saying, listen, it ain't hating. If you got on a red shirt, the shirt just red. Anyway, what I'm saying, <laughs> I used to listen to that jam like it was my joint. It used to come on your mood. Just looking out of the window, watching the asphalt grow. Y'all remember that? Keeping your head above water, making a way if you can. Temporary layoffs, good time. Hold on, y'all got pills? <laughs> Keeping your head above water. Temporary. Anybody can afford just to get laid off? Anyway, good time. <laughs> Easy credit rip-offs, good time. Scratching and surviving. I know a crackhead when I see one. Good times. Standing in the child line. How many of y'all didn't know they said that? You ain't got fun. Good times. Ain't hey, we lucky we got them. Doom, 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 doom. It's my man. Good times. Hello. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, as I stare at this J.J. Evans picture, I'm trying to figure out where exactly this good time is. You see, we live in a time where bad things are happening so rapidly that it just became the new norm. And the activists who used to be active have become lukewarm. And ain't getting hot on nothing unless it's something they can get their publicity stung on. See, where we come from, we become so content with the hump drum of the slums that while the rest of the folks are reaching for the loaf, we give up and accept the little bread they give us. And once it's divvied up amongst the bills, we'll strive to survive here off the crumbs, then find time to antagonize our sons about their pants sagging off their behind. Like that's the bigger issue than the fact that our sons are lagging behind in education or the fact that an archaic school system lacks imagination and the tension for politicians shows deficit in the resources. But the recourse is, convince your kids they was with attention deficit disorder, over medicate them to their sedated, then tell them no child left behind is the same thing as your child moving forward. But when you fast forward the movie, you miss important parts of the presentation. Like how standardized state test scores, no child left behind in a privatized prison system, have a direct correlation to slavery, but they pray that we never get it. They say slavery's over. That's just an excuse we gave y'all the 13th Amendment, but the 13th Amendment was never intended to end slavery. Just switch up the mission, but word of Levar Burton, you ain't got to take my word for it. Give me a second to allow me to read y'all the 13th Amendment. Listen. It said neither slavery nor intended servitude, except as a punishment for a crime, whereas a party is duly convicted, shall exist in the United States and any place subject to the jurisdiction. See, we say it fast like that, people don't tend to get it. But sometimes you gotta slow things down so people can truly listen, listen. It said neither slavery nor indigenous servitude, except as a punishment for a crime, whereas a party is duly convicted, shall exist in the United States in any place subject to its jurisdiction. See, when you put the word except into a sentence, that means you ain't tried to end slavery. You just said it was cool under this condition. Then you use third grade test scores to determine how many prisons you put in the community. Then you try to fool me that we ain't being left behind. Because if you fail, you can pass the class, but you will fail in the test of time. Because you don't get the proper life skills to hold down a nine to five. So you go back, get a loud pack from your man, and get on your grind till you get caught. Then they give you a butthole for the time to court. Put you over, spread your butt shit, show your teeth and cough. Then they throw you in a cell block. Sound like 12 years of slavery to me, I, How they gonna say minimum wage is $7.35 an hour to justify giving a man 35 cents a day? And they say it's because you stay prop. Boy, you sound like livestock. How you gonna be proper to stay when the prison system is owned by a private citizen, which means one man is owned by another man, and the only time I know that to happen is if one man's a slave way. Knowledge, no spirituality. Long as you got a smartphone, pair of true religion jeans, fresh pair of jeans, and you know how to get by and get over, man, we should just get high and watch the time fly. As long as they keep providing us with their canned goods and coal. Peace and blessings.
one right there. Life, where you at? Right here. So I can't even see you. <laughs> oh, right there, I'm guessing you in the back. Now, let me just acknowledge you before I start. Because that last piece right there, I don't know if anybody heard it. <laughs> but that was amazing. Yes, it was. In fact, we can all leave now. I just came to say thanks to the lecture. <laughs> but let us now get to the What, what was said. Poetry, this is the, the true aspect of poetry is what you just saw. Mm. To be able to convey a message that may have been given in two hours, three hours. He just hit it yes. right there, four minutes, three yes. minutes. Just hit you right there and you understood it. And you understood it. Life, you the man. Um, I'm going to start and get right to the point. This little uh, um, book I'm holding here is part of a, um, uh, I wrote three books in the last five years. They're going to come out in succession. You guys are the first ones hearing about this, by the way. Um, one book, uh, I'll start with this one. This book is called Real Niggas, N-I-G-G-A. And the subtitle is, um, a look at institutionalized racism through an analysis of the N-words. So what I did was I looked at the word nigger, nigga, and negro. And we did a 450 page research on these, on these words. You can really see institutionalized racism when you really analyze words like negro, nigger, and nigga. These are not the same words, by the way. These are three different sounds from three different parts of the world that become combined in the United States. That's what this book is, and I wrote this because there's a piece in it that I want to read you uh, that's unrelated to the word nigga, but it has the history that I want to go over today. Another book is called, or the second book is called God's Son. I took this title from Nas's album, uh, God's Son. <laughs> and um, what it is is that I was doing some studying. I got this book called The Hexapla. And what The Hexapla is, is six different versions of the Bible. <laughs> from the Wycliffe 1380, you have Wycliffe's version of the Bible. Actually, the first English translation of the Bible, John Wycliffe, 1380. And then it takes you through six different versions of the Coverdale, Geneva, Bishop's Bible. It takes you all the way, and the sixth one is the King James, 1611 King James. At the top of the book, it has the Greek at the top, and then it has six uh, English translations, and it shows you how the Word of God changed. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say it again. <laughs> it shows you how the Word of God changed over time. As I was studying this book, I realized that the word uh, Jesus Christ, or in, the, in old English it's spelled Jesus Christ, because there was no S's, the S's were the F's. And there were no J's in Hebrew either. The idea of the word Jesus is made up. We can say Yeshua, but we don't even know if that's the name either. The name of Christ has been taken out of our mouths. I'm going to replace it today. This is deep knowledge. And when I say deep, not over your head, not deep like that. But certain knowledge is not for everybody. Mm. Just because you're, you have access to information doesn't mean it's for you. Mm. What I'm going to talk about today, oh, let me just finish that up. And the last one is called an introduction to hip hop. <laughs> I don't really have to go deep into that. Uh, but the basic introduction to hip hop, what, what we're arguing, what we're arguing is that hip hop is being colonized by the university system. Just like the music industry tried to colonize rap music, 
try to just come in and set up its own camp in our culture. The university system is doing the same thing with the study of hip hop. It's just giving itself credit. It is actually it's just giving itself the authority to teach hip hop in the university. Mm. Even though they know that there are teachers, legitimate teachers of hip hop all over the world, but the university system doesn't feel like it needs to uh, get its authority to teach hip hop from hip hoppers. It feels that if you have uh, an African American studies degree, a musicology degree, journalist degree, even psychology, that you can now teach hip hop. That's sort of like saying, um, if I have a degree in, in medicine, I can teach law. Or because I have a degree in engineering, I can teach English. No, you have to be trained to teach hip hop. And the university system doesn't want to respect that. We have a response to that. But before I become belligerent to the universities, a book must be written that explains your point of view. So these are the three books. Oh, and about the, the God's Son, just, just just so you know. The premise of that book is that the word son does not mean the male child of a parent. Son is not, at least in the Bible, it wasn't used as the male child of a parent, of a parent. It's not a young man, a young boy, a son, male child of a parent. What son was was Saturn. And those that have ears to hear, you can just take it now, you're at the beginning of the world. Uh, take it now. The word was soul. When you go back to the earliest translations, when the Bible discusses sons, it's, it doesn't say sons. It says soul. S-O-N-E. Son does not mean son. It means sound. And so when you go back to, say, um, John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word took, and they go on how the Word took on flesh, and the Word dwelt amongst men and, and women, and they, they did not understand. This was the point, was that this Son of God was never a person. It was a frequency. And that if you were able to pick up the frequency of God, the vibration of God, you became God's son or God's sound. You resonated with God, so you became God's soul or sound. Even today, if you look at the etymology of the word son, it, the first meaning of son is not a male child. The first meaning of son is sound. You have cause like sonata, the sonata. Uh, you have sonic, um, song, and, and so on. Anytime you look at sound, you're going to see the word son. So we do a full research on this, and we lay it out in 250 pages, how the son of God was never a male. It was any person that resonated with the vibration of God. Okay, those were the three books. And I mentioned that uh, because, just first of all, so you have knowledge and you know it's about to come out. But also because these three books are what I'm going to draw from today uh, for our conversation. What are we talking about? The name of the organization is putting this on is called Soul Society. Soul Society. I find that interesting. Soul Society. We happen to be here today. I don't know if y'all know this, but we're in a Masonic temple today. Mm. Okay, I don't know if you noticed or not, but mm -hmm. you lay in, you might have seen some. We're in a Masonic temple mm. in honor to be in a place like this, to be able to hear and receive knowledge. Before I begin and go deep into my introduction now, I'd like to start with questions. I know that's a little backwards. But in a conversation like this, where we're going to be discussing the soul, the soul, and society. Let me start with questions first, and, and, this is a, and let me just break the ice real quick. This question's on anything. Now, this is how we start the soul. This question is not, I'm sure to say, your questions are not intellectual. 
Whatever you want to know right now pertaining to me or what you feel I might be able to answer, ask it to me now. Questions? What'd you have to watch? Yo, I was, um, I went to, um, where did we go today, Simone? Who was that place? Chops. Um, uh, Chop House. We was over at the Chop House. Um, walked in there, uh, the cooks bugged out, a uh, waiter bugged out. Um, it took us like a half hour to sit down. Um, pictures, it was crazy. But when we finally sat down, I ordered the salmon and, um, and rice and spinach and I had a salad. Next question. One I just dropped is now here, this. Just came out digitally. I'm re-releasing it on CD in about well, maybe three weeks from now, because I'm trying to get the vinyl with it, and vinyl takes longer to press. Um, I'm on tour now, actually, promoting the album. Uh, took an excursion, of course, to come here. Uh, and so... I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, please, don't, don't clap or thank me for my responsibility. Um, this is a responsibility. Uh, we was, um, you notice I'm, I'm wearing uh, this piece right now. Um, this was given to me uh, by Tribe Called Quest. Um, on it, it says Fight Dog. On it. And this is uh, just to show you, to a little bit talking, I'm answering your question on the album here, musically. Um, I was just in Myrtle Beach about a week ago, two, maybe a week and a half ago. We was in Myrtle Beach, excellent gathering that we had there. Um, and I was supposed to stay in Myrtle Beach and just chill. Uh, I'm on my way to Florida, uh, actually through Atlanta. We stopped in Gainesville, Orlando, then Miami. And around April, uh, around the 18th, 19th, somewhere around there, uh, I hit a cruise ship and I go to Spain. And so I'm starting at the bottom of Europe and then I'm going up, all the way up to like Ireland. So we're hitting everything, France, Germany, Switzerland, Holland, uh, all of it, going up, up, all the way up to uh, Ireland. So in that, um, uh, the reason I mention this as well is because I'm carrying Fife with me um, for, the, for, for the remainder of the year. Uh, it's not everybody, I mean, of course, every, every death is honorable. And everyone that passes on on should be on it, you know, and, and rightfully so. Uh, starting, of course, with my DJ Scott Morrell, and then of course, you know, you have Easy E, you have Mercury from uh, 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 the Force and the D, Force and the C's back then, Force and the D's, um, Heavy D, uh, of course, Tupac, Biggie, Big L, um, Big Pun, uh, and so on and so on, and so many others. But when Fife passed. That had a special significance to it. Um, oh, thanks. Mom, man. <coughs> oh, okay. When Fife passed, um, it had a special significance to it. I knew Fife well. Um, not just on some recording artist uh, deal, um, but, but as a person, as a man. Um, go back and, and take a look at that Tribe Called Quest DVD again. Um, the, the saying, uh, behind every great man is, is a great woman, is an understatement. Um, his wife, Daisha, uh, went under the knife, actually, for fights. She gave fight for kidney. Um, in, in, in that sense, you talk about family and, and sacrifice and what one family member got to do for another. So now let's begin. Oh, wait a minute. One more question. Wait. Not much. Scott Barack Jr. has been in and out of prison over the last, say, 20 years. His family, the family situation with Scott Barack is, is a complicated one. Um, his mother and, and uh, his parents, actually, um, his mother and his uncle, they never wanted Scott to be associated with us. And I say that respectfully. Today, we're all, we're all friends. I love his, his mother. It's, it's not that. But when we first started in 86, actually 85, um, we were the hoodlums and, you know, I'm, I'm the homeless dude in the street and Just Ice is there, 
know, and maybe somebody else, you know, and it's like, so here's Scott LaRock, or shit, his name was Scott Sterling. He was a social worker in the shelter. People don't, don't know that, that it wasn't just my DJ, this was my social worker. Okay, I was in the shelter with 700 dudes. There was a social worker that we had to see to get tokens, subway tokens, back when they had tokens. Uh, you get subway tokens, you get meal tickets, if you needed money, all that thing, so you're a social worker. So, Scott LaRock was our social worker, and he lived a rough life with us because he didn't have to. Uh, he had a good home, four-year college degree. His job as a social worker was a good job, city job. But he chose to look into the plight of a few street kids, just a few of us, and, and took us out, took us right out the hood, uh, pointed our talent out, paid for the studio time, and, and we went in and just yelled, and it became what you hear, South Bronx, Bridges Over, all that was Scott. And so, and so his son, back to his son, when Scott passed, Boogie Down Productions shattered. I tried to keep it going for a few more years. I did do three more albums under the name Boogie Down Productions, but there was no Boogie Down Productions. It was me only, because the group had disbanded. Everybody was pointing fingers. It was you, it was you, no, if you had it just you yeah. And then on top of that, moms pointing the fingers at all of us. The last thing you want is to have a mother of a dead son pointing you out. That's not good. So everybody shattered. And no one got a chance to really, you know, uh, support the young kids uh, that Scott left behind, his daughter, his son, etc. Now, they were well taken care of. The family took care of them. Um, Scott's wife at the time, she took care of them. Uh, she remarried. They, they lived a comfortable life. They, it wasn't like they were destitute like that, but they needed their father. The money, money and good life doesn't make you need your father. So his oldest son, what we call Scott LaRock Jr., started going to jail, living in the street block, in and out of prison. No matter what the family does, he's still in and out. And so we haven't spoke that much. All of Boogie Down Productions. Miss Melody passed away about two years ago, two, three years ago. Um, and so it's like now, when, you know, we look back on it and we say, wow, you know, I mean, now everyone's remorseful. And, I, and I, I, you know, this, your question is at least two more hours long because there's a lot more that I'm not saying that, that should be said in, in light of that. But I will say, to answer, to answer the question, um, uh, I have more of a, a distant relationship with Scott's daughter, son, mother, and brother, his brother Chris. Of course, they know they can come to me for anything, but they are they are a family that's close within themselves. They're not like that. They're not calling KRS every five minutes for something. They're not like that. They, they, they're good where they are, but his oldest son needs his father. A, another classic case. Last question. Yes? <laughs> Well, you know, this is a good way to start what I'm going to say. Because everyone that I want to be here is here. To be honest with you, there's no one's missing. Um, that, that's not to skirt the question, that's the answer. Um, no, everyone's here. Everyone's in attendance. Uh, I can play with that question poetically. Um, there's a few people that should be in this room. <laughs> but uh, I'll leave it at that. Matter of fact, let me, let me have that linger. Let me come back to you on that. But everyone's in attendance. Let me start now with that. You didn't come here today on your own. You may think you did. No doubt. We all think we're moving and it happened on our own. And that's the way we're supposed to think. But if you'd like to raise your consciousness today, if you'd like to uh, delve into another level of mind today, I invite you to the soul. Why am 
I talk about the soul? Well, first of all, this type of lecture is not for everyone. Only those that are supposed to hear this are hearing it right now. Mm -hmm. There were other people that wanted to come. They saw the flyer. They were ready to come. They couldn't. The car just broke down. Phone call came in. I need you over here. They just realized I got work too early in the morning. Can't make it. Couldn't make it. You made it. It was a breeze for some of you. Some had to struggle, but most of you just said, I'm going, and went, and you arrived. You're supposed to be here. This type of knowledge is not just, I have access, I'm going to a lecture, and I'm just going to just listen to the lecture. No, this is privileged knowledge. Let me start with this exercise. Let's locate the soul. I usually do this at the end of lectures, but I'm going to do it at the beginning, so because we're talking about the soul. So we're in a Masonic temple, and Freemasonry is based on Egyptian sciences. Mm -hmm. In fact, in California, there's an old Masonic temple, big, or huge, on Wilshire Boulevard. They're tearing it down now. But they show you on the side of the temple the history of architecture and Freemasonry on the side of the building. And the first person they start off with is a black man named Imhotep. Imhotep was a Kushat. They tried to make Imhotep, of course, in history, an Egyptian. In fact, they tried to make all Kushites Egyptians. But the Kush kingdom and the Egyptian kingdom were two different kingdoms. In fact, most of the time they were at war with each other. Now, the reason I start here is because where we are demands that we begin where we are. What would you have learned if you walked into the Egyptian mystery systems 5,000 years ago? Well, you walk in, first of all, if you ever walked into a true mystery system temple, you would walk in and the priest would tell you, what is your name? You would say, no, my name is David. they say, okay, David, come back in seven years. Not, come on in, David, yo, your seat's right here, uh, where, you know, church service is gone. No. What's your name, David? I'm just humble, David. David, come back in seven years. David goes about his business. Seven years pass. David comes back. I'm ready. The priest says, what's your name? David. <coughs> come back in three years. David goes away. Three years, and now ten years have passed. He hasn't even entered the temple yet. Ten years go by before he even steps foot in the temple. Three years come. The priest says, what's your name? My name is David, man. Why do you keep asking me that? The priest says, finally, you get it. Come on in and take the first degree. What's the point? Here's the point. How do you say your name? Your name is your nature. What you call yourself is what you are going to be. Anytime you are looking to change your situation, you have to first change your name. The way in which you say your name is how other people are going to deal with you. What's your name, Mary? Mary must stay broken, poor, and ignorant. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Mary Ski from 123. You know me? Mary gonna get money now. <laughs> Doors gonna open for Mary. Why? Because if you can't say your own name with power, 
No one else will. If I stop here, your name must have power, or you get nowhere in life. Yeah, people can hook you up, of course. Right place, right time, you can do that. You can pay your way in. You can learn your way in. But what we talk about here, what we're talking about here, is moving in life by way of the soul. The Egyptians said that humanity thinks with its heart. Rome said humanity thinks with its mind. What do you mean? Egypt said thinking. Thinking is in the heart. Rome said no. Thinking is in the brain. We all say now, we, we say, yeah, I got to think about somebody. And you, you touch your head naturally. <laughs> if you was in ancient Kush, or even Egypt, when you started thinking, you would go like this. Ah, oh, we think, we think. What's your name? KRS one, knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. That's what I want in my life. What's your name? The Blastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> What's your name? Lawrence Parker. When I was Lawrence Parker, I lived a Lawrence Parker life. <laughs> <laughs> Larry life was good, it was cool. Growing up in New York, Bronx, Brooklyn, Uptown, you know, Larry life. Larry life was a struggle, no doubt. But when that young man Larry realized this particular knowledge I'm giving you right now, listen, I'm not going to get anywhere with a name like this, or oh, I got to say it differently. When I say my name Larry, it doesn't, I don't see it. I mean, I feel good about it. My mom's name me that. This is this has got honor to it, but where I'm trying to go, I'm not named where I want to. The, 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 where I want to go, people are named different things on yeah. Where I want to be, I want to be in this thing called hip hop. Then I wanna, then I want to do my thing. Let me see some of the names in hip hop. Grandmaster Flash. No, that's Joseph Sadler. No, <laughs> Africa Bear Potter. No, no, that's that's some Kevin Dominant. And is it Kevin Dominant or is it Africa Bear Potter? Which, which is it? It starts with your nature. And if your nature has not really changed, neither will your name. I'll say this again. If your nature has not changed, neither will your name. You may think you're calling yourself something different so that you can change your nature. No, your nature has changed and now you're looking for your new name. You're looking for your new self. You're looking for your new nature. But the nature changes first. Then that motivation is what makes you go, what's my new name? So first let's look at what we call ourselves and what we mean to ourselves. If you can't look in the mirror, you're going nowhere. If you don't like what you see in the mirror, you got to check that first. Because the intellect could look at itself in the mirror and not like itself and still succeed. The intellect can succeed, even though it might not like itself. The intellect is self-critical all the time, analyzing itself, trying to improve itself. That's the mind, that's the intellect. But the soul is already what it is. There's no change in the soul. There's no, I'm on the path, I know, and I know what that means, you said I'm on a spiritual path. But if you want to talk really scholarly, there's no path. 
No matter. The soul is with you. You're either born God or you're not. Ninety mm. percent of the people in this room are born God. The only way you could be here is if you was. Like I said, others tried to come and could not. They're not God. That's hard to say, right? That's hard. What do you mean, Chris? Everybody just couldn't make it? They, they're not God? Maybe not. I'll put the maybe on it. But if you want harsh truth, no. See, when God calls God, God appears to God. Doubting your 
yourself. Stop believing that you're just human. I'm only human. Nobody's perfect. These are lies. You are perfect. You are. What is perfection? Perfection, the literal meaning of perfection is completion. That's it. Nothing more. People don't want to be perfect because they don't understand what it means. They think being perfect means you're above everybody or you're holy or somehow you can't do no wrong when you're perfect. That's the total opposite of perfection. To be perfect, you have to start from the lowest level. You got to start from the gutter. Ain't no do-gooder. I was perfect my whole life. I did nothing wrong. I never told a lie. You're not wise. Wisdom demands the gutter. If you want to be wise, you got to drink heavy till your liver falls out. Then you can tell others, stop drinking. <laughs> you can't tell somebody, stop drinking, if you have not. Get it, come on. you got to have two, three guns in the crib. Before you tell a young kid, yo, listen, you're going to get shot doing that. <laughs> young kid, man, what you talking about, man? Yo, let me show you that. Oh, oh, word, word, yeah, gee, I hear you, yeah. <laughs> ain't no young person listening to nobody that ain't been through something. Tell me what you've been through, and I'll listen to you. <coughs> tell me that you lived my struggle, you went through what I went through, and now I can tell, I can learn. But if you never did what I did, never went through what I went through, never, never been to places I've been, never done none of that, but now you're going to try to lecture me, you're going to try to tell me, no, there's no wisdom in that. There's no wisdom. You're not hitting my soul. I don't feel you. Name and nature. Here's an exercise, y'all. Here's what we're going to do. Let's locate the soul. And count to three. Uh, we're going to say hip-hop. Here's the exercise. Count and three. We're going to say hip-hop to ourselves. Don't say it out loud. Say it only to yourself. At the count and three, in yourself, we're going to say hip-hop. Don't say it out loud. Just say it to yourself. One, two, three. The great master would then ask you your second question after that exercise. The question would be, who just spoke? That's right. <laughs> who just spoke? Who just spoke? Let's do it again. At the count of three, don't speak out loud, speak within yourself. One, two, three. What voice is that? So. <laughs> so. This is, you just spoke and did not move your mouth. That's the mind. Along. Take it in slow. This is 5,000 year old techniques. When you walk into the, the ancient systems, Egyptian Kushite, when you walk into the Ethiopian, ancient Ethiopian systems, you did see know thyself on the wall before you walk into the zoo. You saw know thyself, but that was for everybody else that didn't have knowledge. <laughs> they would walk by the mystery and say, yo, they said know thyself, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -uh. This did not move. This voice 
did not speak, yet you spoke. Let's go further. You heard yourself speaking. How is that possible? How can you hear yourself speak and you didn't speak? Your mouth didn't say no word. You said, and you heard it. This mouth did not speak, and these ears did not hear you speak. Yet you spoke, and you heard yourself speaking. If you close your eyes, you can see your future. And your past. What is the vision that sees your past? Ah, he said imagination. Which is, by the way, the Western term for soul. <laughs> image. <coughs> your image nation. When you imagine you are projecting yourself, Imagination, some say consciousness, some say soul, some say inner, inner, you know, inner light, inner person. Yeah, all that would be true. But let's get it straight. These two eyes do not see your past, yet you see your past. These two eyes do not see your future, yet you can see a future. You see it. Imagine this. You see your future. These eyes are not seeing that. You can speak without the mouth. You can hear without the ears. We're locating the soul now. We're locating the first you. The you that projects this you. This is not KRS-1. Leg on. And this is not KRS-1. KRS-1 is that voice inside. This is the projection of KRS-1. KRS-1, though, is not a physical thing. It's an idea. Again, KRS-1 is not the physical thing you're looking at. This is what I'm projecting to you. This is what I want you to see of me. But the real me is that voice, is that sight, is that hearing that does not need the physical body to exist. The ancient priests would say, read that on the wall. Know thyself. Don't say it out loud, say it to yourself. You would go away baffled. Know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. Oh, that's what. Know thyself. Not know thy body. Know thyself. What is that self? Well, you exist without the body. You have ears, you have eyes, you have a voice that's vibrant without this mouth, these ears, without any of this. None of this. None of this is necessary for you to exist. The ancient priest would let you know right there, there is no death. Because if you can speak, see, and hear now without the body, when this body drops off, you're still speaking, hearing, and seeing. That's right. We're in a Masonic temple. They would kill you <laughs> symbolically. <laughs> when you reach the high degree. What's the symbolism of that? It's ancient Egypt. It means that you have to die to your old self to be reborn again as the God. It's symbolic, but here's what it really means to the soul. You are already dead now. 
Don't fear death. You're dead already. You already have an existence that's functioning without the physical body. It's not the physical body that makes your inner voice. It's your inner voice that makes the outer physical body voice. So once you realize and begin to practice the true meaning of meditation, by the way, mm. meditation had nothing to do with relaxation or breathing <laughs> or any of that originally. These things were added later on. The original concept of meditation was for you to die every night. So when your death actually came, you never died. In fact, the Islamic poet, Rumi, once said, die before you die, so when you die, you don't die. Again, die before you die, so when you die, you don't die. Ancient knowledge on that. Because what it's saying basically is, if I have an eye, that can see without these eyes, ears that can hear without the ear, mouth that can... Shouldn't I be more concerned about that person than this person? My inner voice is more powerful because that's the immortal me. That inner voice does not go away when the outer voice stops. When the outer eyes stop seeing, the inner eyes continue to see. When the outer ear no longer hears, the inner ear continues to hear. Neurologists, there was a study, I saw this study the other day. Neurologists are now baffled because they've reached the climax of reports where people who were clinically brain dead, they were operating on these people and killed them. They were operating on these people and they died on the table. These people who they was operating on, brain died while they were being operated on. Vegetable, basically. In a coma. Brain dead. Okay? They revived. And the person comes back. And it says, I saw everything that was going on. I remember everything y'all were doing. Tells you verbatim. You said this. You said that. You was over there crying. You ran up the block to go get something. You, you told her this. There are now thousands of cases. Neurologists don't even know what to do with this data. Because what they're saying is that they thought memory was in the brain. But they said when the brain is dead. People still remember. Memory is not in the brain, it's in the soul. Your essence is what is recording, not your ears and brain. Your soul is recording you, not your brain. No, die before you die. So when you die, you don't die. The way you live forever is by becoming your inner voice, not your outer voice. This is immortality. Immortality is, I am more the inner me than the outer me. It is the inner me that guides me, not the outer me. I buy the outer me. I tell the hand to go here. I tell the hand to pick this up. I'm not led. I'm not stimulated to pick up the towel. I don't have to be told to pick up the towel. I choose to pick up the towel. This is yet the first lesson you would learn in the ancient system. The first one. <coughs> know thyself. How do you know yourself? Go within. Start talking in that other body, in that other place. The more you talk in that other place, in that other body, with those other ears and those other eyes, what starts happening? You start to manipulate physical reality. How is this possible? Because now you figured out how to step outside of it. See, the body is trapped in three-dimensional space. 
This is what the body is three dimensional. Back, forward, up, down, right, left. That's the body. But you can go in and out. That's the priest. This is why the priest disappeared. They said, what happened to the priest? They just went into something. Everybody else got to go back, forth, right, left, up and down. That's three dimensions and plus time. Three dimensions plus time. We know, you know, this is Einstein. Theory of relativity, right? This is what it is. But now here's how you escape three-dimensional space and reality. Here's how you escape it. You can go in and out. Not just right and left, up, down, back, forth. You can go in and out. The spirit is in, the soul is out. They're the same things, but for the sake of, of teaching, try to remember that the spirit is always inward. The soul is outward expression. Second lesson. If, if, if you understand this, you are not the flesh. You are the voice in it. You are the eye. You are the sight in it. You are the ears in it. So there is no death because you're already dead. You just have to practice death a little more, not life. If you know that's where we all gonna wind up, why not start practicing that? <laughs> See, this is a mature spiritual being. We know that this life is temporary. Don't be afraid of that. Get prepared. When I was homeless in the street, living crazy in Brooklyn, 1981, crazy Brooklyn, Flatbush Avenue, Church Avenue, Rasmus High School, Prospect Park, I mean, madness. But I was studying something different. I didn't wait, well, let me put it this way. My nature caused me to know what it is I'm telling you before I read it. Before someone told it to me, it's my nature that told me. How can you speak right now? How, how is it that you can speak right now without your body? That means there's no death, no fear in this. Guide your body. Guide yourself. Guide your life. You are in control of your life. People say that all the time, but they don't give you the techniques. Here's the techniques. One, your name got to be powerful and it got to be according to your purpose. What do you feel like? What do you love? What do you like? What are you gravitating toward? Name yourself. Then, go with it. Be more of the inner person than the outer person. The more you are the outer person, you're subject to racism, sexism, classism, etc. You're subject to poverty, sickness, ignorance, pain. As long as you stay in the outer body. The minute you become the inner woman, the inner man, you're not under those laws anymore. Let me show you how it works. I was in the shelter, and I thought I had to go somewhere to become successful. I read a little passage in the Bible that said, be still and know that I am God. I didn't understand it. Until I went to the shelter, sitting on the edge of the bed, 740 dudes, this is noisy, lights are always on me, and just I sitting there, yo man, how we gonna become MCs, how we gonna become rappers, we wanna be like L Cool J, Run DMC, and Houdini, and these are the huge stars at the time, we're talking like 85, 84. And L just came out with radio, and I need a beach, man, press, suck MCs was on, wow. We sit in the shelter with nothing, dirty clothes, broke, nothing. We was like, yo, man, we gotta get some fresh care, man, if we gonna go be MCs. MCs don't look like us. Yo, man, we gotta go hang out with the club, 
clubs, man. Yo, we in the shelter, dude. How are we supposed to get some? We, we, we got to get down to the club with MCs, man. But I always knew in my mind, I said, yo, be still and know that I am God. I didn't understand it, but the words kept coming. So we started beating on the walls of the bathroom in the Bronx. Right there, we started beating on the walls. Boom, boom, back, back, boom, back. Just Dice would ride, and he'd get on, boom, boom, back, I'd start riding. This was our studio, <coughs> our first studio. It was in the bathroom of the shelter. We beating on the wall, boom, boom, back. We getting it in, roar rhymes. In walks a security guard. Yo, what's all this racket, man? What y'all doing? You can't be beating on the walls like this. Yo, man, we just in here beating on the walls. We having some fun, man. You know what it is, yo. Nah, you can't do that here. We walk outside. As we're walking outside, we see the new social worker walking to the shelter. It was Scott Sterling. I ain't got to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> here it is. I'm in the shelter. There's nothing happening. This is poverty like you've never seen. Whole families in the shelter sleeping in two beds. Spot four, five to six member families and there's only two beds they can allow them. You see mothers and fathers putting the beds together. They're trying to sleep in rows on the bed so everybody can get in the bed. This is the shelter. We in there with nothing. I said, how are we going to be MCs? God said, be still. Every night I was visualizing myself as an MC. Every night I'd go to sleep. I wasn't in 1985. I was in 1995. I saw myself in 95. I said, yo, 95, I'm spitting it like this. I'm doing it like this. That's how I'm doing it. What's that? The inner voice. My mouth did not say, yo, I'm going to be the dopest MC ever. No. <clears throat> my inner voice saw my nature. My inner voice is no word, really. It's just... I know I'm going to be there in 19, it's 1995. No, it's not. It's 1985, dude, and you're in the shelter. No, no, no. You're in 1985, and you're in the shelter. <laughs> I am in 1995 on tour. I see myself doing this. is exactly how it went down. Nobody hooked me up. I'm in the shelter visualized and using ancient metaphysical techniques. And they work. If KRS doesn't mean anything, his whole career means that the power of the mind is real. Mm. Get serious about that. Here's the technique I'm visualizing. I'm using my inner voice, not the outer, the inner me that projected itself into the future. I saw myself in 95. I'm rhyming in 95 doing my thing and I fall asleep in that dream. They were sleeping in our beds now. We was like, yo! So we gotta go through the process over again? Yeah, this thing will move to another section and this thing and another. So we went back and we was like, yo, Mr. Sterling. You know, we, we they, they took our meal to get meal tickets. They said, took our meal tickets and said, we're not in the blue section no more. And they took our beds. We, we gotta go to another shelter. And they were sending us back to Brooklyn. We was in the Bronx. They were sending us to Brooklyn, to Atlantic Avenue, the armory on Atlantic Avenue. They were sending us over there. Wow. So I was like, yo, you can't do this to me right now. So I told Scott, I was like, yo, this is what it is. Dude stood up, walked outside with a pen and a bad paper. And he was like, this whole section right here. And it was like, every, it was like this whole section. Like every, like every one of these chairs is a bed. Okay? He said, this whole section right here, the blue section, this is my section. I'm going to reorganize this section. These guys right now, as the words were coming out of his mouth, we was watching a black man right there. This dude was in control. Okay, Latinos were working, whites were working, everybody was there. But this is Scott Sterling, head of the social workers. He walked in and was like, no, we're not doing that. These dudes right here, they with me. We was like, yeah. Here we go now. We more now. We bigger than the security now. Security, we went to the bathroom. Boom, boom, back, back, boom, back. Yeah. We like, we don't care what you think now. We beating on the walls and surprisingly enough. Now the security's with us. Now because they see that the head social.
social worker gave us about 10 of us. And we was the young dudes in the shelter in the hip hop. And he took a liking to us because he was a DJ. And he said, I'm going to take all 10 of y'all out. And we're going to call ourselves the Boogie Down Crew from Boogie Down Bronx. And we was like, whatever. <laughs> Let's get it out. He said, yo, we the Boogie Down Crew. So right then, now imagine this social worker put on 10 homeless dudes, OK? If this dude had have said, yo, um, rob that dude right there. <laughs> Man, folks got the rock. What? <laughs> this wasn't about just some street that this dude was the meal ticket, literally. He used to write out our meal ticket. We had a card called a meal ticket. And you could only get it from the social worker. He was our literal meal ticket. So when we went back to the club in Harlem, we street dudes. We don't have nothing. So we get back up in Harlem and we start linking with other street dudes that they had nothing. Suddenly we find ourselves hanging. We like, yo, this my dude right here. We like, so all of a sudden we like hanging with uptown hustlers, people. We homeless broke with nothing. But here's the point. We was on with Scott LaRock. Scott LaRock was the main DJ in Manhattan and up in Harlem, up in Harlem main DJ. He was a social worker in the shelter. Here's the point. I was visualizing in 85, me being KRS-1 in 95. I thought I had to go somewhere to be a rapper, to be successful. No. Be still and know that God is God. My blessing came to me in the shelter. Let me show you the power of God. Okay? My blessing came to me in the shelter. There's no way you can become anything in the shelter. My blessing came to me in the shelter in the form of the very social worker that I had to go see for help. The social worker was the DJ. <laughs> that DJ came to DJ Scott LaRock. We took off the crew later and became Boogie Down Productions. And then we formed our crew. We put out a little record, you know, uh, you know the story of South Bronx and so on. But here's the point. The more my dreams came true, the more strength and faith I had in my own mind. This is how it works. If you want to know yourself, you have to create yourself. Yeah. I thought I had to go somewhere. God is now. The minute you say, I want, boom, your blessing's already with you. You're blind. You're blind. You're too slow. The minute you say, I am not, God already hurt your heart. It's already with you. Now, what you need to do is look around your environment. Look around your own environment. Where, where is the value? God already placed it with me. This is what you should do. This is homework. When you go home tonight, look around your own environment for your success. You don't need to go all up here, all over there, make a phone call here, in and out over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every night before you go to sleep, see yourself exactly where you want to be. You are God. You seek the things of high enough. You, you, you have the skill to command your reality. That's why you're here. If you didn't have the skill, you would not be here hearing this. The universe is only speaking to itself. There's no separation in the universe. This is the universe having a conversation with itself. And so here you are. Learning right now that you are the God you've been looking for. Stop using your skills. Stop practicing being God. Mm. Mm. Did you say that? Yes, you did. <laughs> Start practicing being God. What a wild thing to say. Hmm. Let's go forward. Your inner self projects the outer self. 
The story I told you is all true. Nobody hooked me up. No company came and saved me, no. I used a certain technique. And let me show you how brutal it is. Let me show you why the Bible is full of war and violence. Because the minute you stand for God, here comes the devil. Mm. You don't get this that easy. The minute you stand, say, yo, you know what? I know myself. That's it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to see myself where I need to be. The minute you say that, here comes the devil. What's the devil? The distraction. Hmm. The distraction. But here's the deeper science. There is no devil. There's only God. That's right. That's right. God comes to you in all kinds of forms. The young one, the young in spirit, they see devils, demons, and goblins. And they're right, they are devils, demons, and goblins. But the older spirit knows that that is the disguise of God. That's a disguise. Your adversity is making you stronger. Push against it. Push against it. Nothing on this earth gets strong easy. We have gravity pushing us down. The only reason your muscles are the way they are right now without exercise is because of gravity. You're pushing against gravity right now. Just for me to do this is pushing against forces. Everything you must push against, God gives you the adversary. Gives you adversary. Another name for the devil too, by the way. The adversary. The accuser. God sends that to see who you are. Mm. God never leaves you, ever. It's you that leave God. So you ask for something, and here comes the adversity. Are you worthy of what you're asking for? Mm. Because God is not going to give you something you're not worthy of. It's going to destroy you. God is always looking out for you. Always. Even when you ain't looking out for yourself. That's why when your prayers are not answered, don't be discouraged. You were saved. <laughs> the truly spiritual person knows if I pray for something, I know it's coming. <laughs> if it don't come, it wasn't for me. Thanks, God. <laughs> I want to read you something out of here. Um... This is another piece of the lesson, ancient in, it, in, its, in its origin, ancient. And this is the, um, I'm going to read you a little bit of the, uh, the Kush, the origin, the origins of humanity according to ancient Kushite uh, philosophy. It's the origins of humanity. This is how ancient Africans, this is the oldest myth story, recorded myth story uh, in the world. And I use that word myth lightly because it's not myth. Within these primordial waters, remember the first, imagine this, let me, let me go slow. In ancient Kushite creation knowledge, water appeared as the mother and father gods, Nunet and Nun. Stop. The first gods were always male and female. <coughs> This idea of a solo male god is a lie. And it's not your history. It's your history. Mother and father gods and the ancient Kushites always put the mother first. In ancient Kushite creation knowledge, water appeared as the mother and father gods, Nunet and Hawk, formlessness, Kuket and Kuk, Darkness, Amunet and Amun, hiddenness, stop. Formlessness, darkness and hiddenness. Try to keep this in mind. Formlessness, <laughs> darkness, and hiddenness. From these six forces, because they're in pairs, 
existing within New Net and Noon, the primordial waters, rose the self-created being Atum, later called Ra. Atum plus Nunet and Noon, Huket and Hawk, Kuket and Kuk, and Amunet and Amun make up the first gods of Kush called the Aniyad or the Nine. Kush begins with nine gods. A tomb, Ra, would give birth to Tefna, moisture, <coughs> and Shu, <coughs> air. Tefna, moisture, and Shu, air, would give birth to Nut, the sky, and Geb, the earth. Stop. Your original culture says that the woman was the universe and the male was the earth. It's backwards today. Nunet and Geb would give birth to Aset, or Isis, and Asa, Osiris, or Old Dirty Best. <laughs> These two beings are sister and brother, husband and wife, and mother and father, all at the same time. In addition, <clears throat> Nut, the sky, and Geb, the earth, would also give birth to Isis and Osiris' sister and brother, Nephits and Set. These family of gods were mortals. They lived, they taught, they argued and fought amongst each other, and they died. But their deeds and character does live on in what Eurocentric education calls creation myths. Stop. The reason I read you this <clears throat> is because this is what was taught in ancient mystery systems. That Nunet and Nun, Kuket and Kuk, Amunet and Amun, these are forces. This is what you was taught first. You do not come from people. You come from forces. Let me say it again. If you, if you believe that your ancestry is from here, and the word is believe, because this is what this is how you became the priest. It wasn't that it was your bloodline, really. That's later in Egyptian history. It was your character, your nature. Your nature had to, they would read you this story. They would read 20 kids this story. 15 of them would get up and go, I don't know what that was. Five of them would be, I got it. Those five would go on to the next level. What is it teaching? It's teaching that some people, because of their character, they come from other people. Other people, because of their character, they come from forces. Mm. What separates the God from the human or the animal mm. is character. Nothing else. Character, your nature. Do you believe you come from a man and a woman? Or do you believe you come from forces? You're using both of your brains. The more words you know, the more things you can see. So choose your words wisely. This is your soul's body. Your soul's body of words. Hear what I'm saying? The body of your soul are your words. The more words you feed yourself, the more things your soul can see. The electricity are coming right now, coming, coming right now. The soul can see more than these two eyes. That's what you need. What is the meaning of God in the Oxford English Dictionary? A superhuman being with power over nature. That's the definition.
definition of God. In the oxygen, uh, what is the definition of God? A superhuman being with power over nature and human affairs. That's the full definition. So if you, and what, and what does it mean to be a superhuman being? Super like perfect, perfection, completion. The minute you complete something, you're perfect. Complete yourself. Super beyond. That's all. That's it. Super means beyond. A superman is a man that goes beyond. That's all. The God man is a superman. The God woman is a superwoman. She just goes beyond. The father that can go to the strip club but stays home with his kid is a superman. Because he's doing more than the average man. The average man is no judgment on average man. He's just average man. Women, no judgment. Hey, see, women always say men are dogs, men are boys. That's what you see. Women, you can create your husband to be whatever you want him to be. He has no choice but to do whatever you say. You are God. Women, you are telling men they're nothing, so we are nothing. You're telling men that they're dogs, so we're dogs. We dogs then. Women, you have divine speech on you right now, coming right now, you know I'm going over. So the period is this. Your words dictate your reality. The more words you know, the more things you can see. Name the things around you according to what you want them to be, not how you was taught they should be. We named this thing hip-hop because the government did not know what that was. They know what civil rights is. They created that. They know what African-American is. They created that too. They even know what black is, white is. Asian, all of their words. Hip hop. Government don't know what the hell that is. That's why we're successful. Thanks for listening. This is the song that this gospel artist, he ain't got to do. He, there's no reason for him to do nothing with me. 
he says, this is the song that I think the Christian community needs. <laughs> this is what I'm going to lead my campaign with yeah. <laughs> right now, okay? Yeah. Kurt Franklin doing that. Yeah. What you did today, you don't know what this is. You don't, don't know. You have no Who idea. Even out there Yo, the next president, the chief of police, the person to cure cancer, that person was in that audience. Tell me. They, they was there. And somebody got hit tonight. Yeah, we changed some lives. Changed lives. Out. Somebody walked out of there tonight and said, you know what? I'm finishing that book. Mm -hmm. uh, yo, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to that place. I'm going to be it. Mm -hmm. And you just now turned somebody tonight. Tonight, you just turned somebody in the direction that's going to help the entire planet. This is, why, this is why we do what we do. It's a mission. You just put somebody, you, you, this is it. You said granddad lives right here yeah. and will get passed on. Yeah. Well, the same thing with the truth. No doubt. The truth lives right there and was now passed on to other people. And you don't know who, you never know who you're hitting. Right. You never know. But you will know eventually. The they're going to come back. And they're going to say, yo, I was at that joint you did with KR and this one, life and everybody. They gonna say I was there, and come back to you. And you're 23, so this is what's so crazy, because like when you're 33, <laughs> dudes gonna come back to you. You are gonna be like, yo, 10 years ago. It happens to me every day. Yeah. Every day, somebody cop pulled me over. Oh, I saw you over there. Yeah. Yo, I was at the lecture. Yeah. You know, all kind of people. So. It's always also good to walk walk humble like you do, you and you and your partners. You guys walk with a certain. I mean, you're proud to look at. You know what natural. I'm saying? But that's the point. That's the point. It's natural. That's why it's an honor. Right. That that's why it's an honor. If this was something you learned and. And you became, okay, there's a place for that. You transformed yourself. Yes, you you grew. Yes, now that's good. But the natural, the one whose mind was made for this, whose soul was sent for this. That's what it means to be natural. You were sent here. You know, others were brought here. <laughs> you know, when you naturally do it, that means you were sent Something sent you into the world right. to help your people, and you're doing it. That means I'm standing next to someone. I'm I'm humbled by this. I'm st I'm looking at someone like, wow, I could brag and say, yo, I knew G when he was 23, <laughs> and we was up over here in this place. Now you're 33, and you big now. You done did a hundred of these events. Soul Society's huge now. Matter of fact, you have a Soul Society now. Some little land somewhere, three, three you know, you, you now got it big now. And now we look back and say, wow, how did it start? A little lecture right here. And it didn't even start with the lecture. Like you said, you got on your grind, mm -hmm. walked into places like this. That's where it started. Right here. You started here and you did your thing. So this is what it is. It's like, nah, man, you were sent in the world to do great things. This, this is what they call a messiah. This is the original concept of the Messiah. Someone who is just like us, born in our world, but rose up and keeps rising. We like, yo, but ain't that ain't that Larry? <laughs> ain't that ain't that dude? That, nah, it, it is, but it isn't. It, it, it looked like him, but it ain't him. It's, uh, this dude is larger than what we think. It, and there you go. So again, man, I just I thank you again for that. And, and I just wanted to impart, based on what you were saying about your man passing, and you trying to get the people together, don't be discouraged at all. You're no, not. No, not. You're not. not. Yeah. But don't be discouraged right. at all. Because our work is 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 little. Oh, yeah. It's small. It's not, ah, big crowd and ah. Nah. I saw, I saw the head mason come out. <laughs> the dude who was, I guess, controlling the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. He came out. And he shook my hand. And he wanted, he wanted to say, you got to get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did he do? He did it slick, though. He was like, yo, you know, good lecture. You know, this kind of oh, thing. Yeah. And he said, yeah, we got to close up. And, and we just we just left. 
Uh, but but it was um, you brought respect to the lodge. You brought respect to the community. When people see the, the recordings of this, they're going to wish they were there. The next time Soul Society putting something on, watch how now it get. Now you're going to be like, no, nah, it ain't real no more. There's 5,000 people outside now. Nah, nah, hold up, all y'all can't be real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now it's going to be this. And that's what happened to us. We put out, so, you know, all the records we, we, we put out, only a little bit of people came to those. On, only a small amount of people. But we stood with, on our ground. Why is that? You must learn if you hire KRS, that's what you're going to get. A lot of people didn't hire us. Radio didn't want to play our stuff. They didn't want to have nothing to do with us. We put the self-destruction record together. I called everybody in the whole industry. Only the dudes you see on that record showed up. <laughs> you know, only them dudes, okay? But now look, the little stuff, boom, 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 boom. Now it's, now it's this. You know, now I'm getting keys to the city and proclamations and, oh, yeah, you know, this is what it is. But when it first started, nobody was in support of that. Nobody. And that's why I'm looking now. You're a complete success. Complete yeah. success. Because you're doing it exactly the way. It, the way it's always done. You know what I'm saying? It, the way, the small, this, see, this is the flaw in democracy. Here we go. Democracy, democracy. The majority never decided anything. Never. It was a small group of people that decided on something that then affected the, the majority. Right. It's the minority that affects the majority, not the other way around. People yell, democracy, democracy, that's mob rule. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people, we all going to decide. No, you're not. The dude that read the thousand books is going to decide. The dude who's naturally set into the world to do something, that's who's going to decide. But we lost our sense of sovereignty, so nobody sees their brother as the king anymore. No one sees their sister as the king. Everybody want to lead, nobody want to follow. The ones usually willing to follow are the leaders. And the ones claiming leadership, you need to be at the back of the line. You know what I'm saying? But and I say that to say, based on what you were saying, never be discouraged, and you're not. But I have to say it anyway, for the camera, for other people, and for everybody, you, you, you did it. You did it, and you should never be discouraged. You should do another one quickly. Oh, ASAP. ASAP, do see, another one. See, my thing, one. see, if nobody would have came, right. you know, I got my mindset on my mission is saving the people. I, I can't remember what point it was. It was something about, you know, um, I don't know, it might have been something I was watching earlier. Matter of fact, it was uh, Eric Thomas. Mm -hmm. You know, he was speaking on goals, you know, it's like once you reach a goal, then it's like over. My goal is everlasting, you right. know, I'm trying to save everybody I can. I'm trying to do as much as I can, you know, and a lot of people, they'll look at maybe a failed event or whatever mm -hmm. they label it as, as, you know, what are you going to do now or, or your money low, what are you going to mm -hmm. do now where you, you fail, you got knocked out, what are you going to I only have one option, you right. know. I got a long life to live. Right. My only option is right. to succeed, you know. Right. You said I got. I could live to seventy. You said on the. You said I could live to seventy. I ain't living For like real, this. Like really, I was down and out. You understand? Like I felt like worthless being right. around my people, like my family, like my whole like. Even when I was still lost, I knew I wanted to make them proud. Right. I didn't know how I was gonna do that. Right. How am I gonna make them proud?